Today we're taking a look at something a little bit different. This is the 12 volt smart Bluetooth lithium battery by Renodeo. It features wireless connectivity to view health and state of the battery with an onboard battery management system. This makes it really safe and easy to use and a lot less intimidating compared to just buying naked battery cells because the BMS is gonna help prevent overcharging, over discharging, any overcurrent issues or short circuits, and it also keeps the cells balanced. The total cell capacity is 50 ampere hours or 50,000 milliampere hours. So it's got a lot of capacity. Now, as this is a drone channel, I'll show you how we can utilize it as a field battery pack for charging FPV drone batteries and why it just might be an alternative to a more expensive power bank. As a full disclosure, Rododio did send this battery out to me for the purpose of review and testing, but the content of this video is in my own words without any editorializing from them, and I've not exchanged any money for this video. I just get to keep the battery. So with that out of the way, let's begin. First, let's talk about the weight because at a glance, this looks a lot like a typical 12 volt car battery, but this is a LifePo 4 battery, so it only weighs about 11 pounds. A similar lead acid car battery with these charge and discharge capabilities is usually gonna weigh around three times what this LifePo 4 battery does. Carrying around by its little handle is really easy, and I mean, it's light enough that you can technically just carry it with one arm, and you can even throw it in a backpack and carry it on your back it actually fits in my little FPV drone bag. The Bluetooth monitoring app and the BMS is really what makes this thing cool to me. So this is a smart battery. Uh, with the QR code on the label, you can scan it and it takes you right to the Rododio app, which is available on both the App Store and Google Play Store. Now the app features live statistics where you get a complete health profile of what's going on. You've got output power in watts, the total current, voltage state and capacity remaining. And as you draw from the battery, you can see the statistics in real time. Also, as you charge it up, an indicator shows the estimated time with how long until charging is complete. The built-in BMS handles keeping all the cells balanced, ensuring the battery is in an optimal state. And if the BMS fails at self-check, the app will indicate that as well. You don't really have to wonder too much if the cells are being kept in the state that they should be. It's pretty much just gonna handle everything for you. Here's what to expect and how to get the most out of this battery for charging FPV drones. So you're gonna wanna pick up this O-ring terminal XT60 connector. It's a 10 gauge cable and you screw it right into the top of the unit just like this. The nuts and the washers come with the battery. The cable does not, so keep that in mind. Now you just need a charger that accepts DC input and the vast majority of the ones on the market today will do that and you are ready to start charging. Now we could do some math to figure out just how much we we could get, but I figured I would set up a real case scenario here. I've got six 1550 milliamp per hour 4S batteries, and I set the charge to 10 amp. I wanted to see what was the end result, how much was left in the battery after these were fully charged. Since this is parallel charging, I did it outside, and I would probably recommend an even longer cable to get the batteries away from everything, but this is what I had for now. The entire charge process completed after about 38 minutes, and that's about what I would expect charging at 10 amps. But what I really wanted to see was how much of the battery was remaining. And it looks like we used only 13% to charge all those packs. Based on this, I think you can reasonably estimate anywhere between 30 to 40 packs can be obtained out of one full charge. While you're placing an order for the O-ring cable, if you don't already have one of these Y splitters, I'd highly recommend grabbing one. This way, if you have two chargers, you can wire them up and you can power them up both at the same time to get even more out of this battery. Now, there are two ways that you can charge the battery. The first way is to just buy a specific charger for it, like this 10 amp DC charge brick, which Rododio sells on their website, or if you already have a hobby grade charger for drone batteries and RC cars, you can also probably just use that as long as it has a LIFE mode. Now these batteries are usually shipped in an inactive state to preserve the life of the battery while in storage. And when charged for the first time, they wake up. Unfortunately though, even some high quality modern hobby grade chargers like mine do not have that capability to wake it up in the LIFE charge mode. You'll just get an error if you try to charge it for the first time this way. The solution is really simple though. Set the charger to use the NIMH charging mode, then set the charge amps to 0.1 and start charging for just two seconds. 
That will wake the battery and BMS up immediately. It just needs some process that will feed it current, and there's probably a safety feature in the charger in the LIFE mode that prevents that. For charge settings on my D6 Duo, I set it to LIFE mode or lithium phosphate mode, set the cell voltage count to 3.4, and set the cell count to 4S if not auto detected. Next, I set the charge current to 15 amps, and that's the maximum allowed in the Hoda D6 for this mode. It takes about three hours to get to 70% charged from 0%, but then that remaining 30% takes a lot more time, as my charger, especially with an AC input, can't push as many amps toward the end of the cycle. As you can see, it's slowed down to about 5.8 here at 70% charged. The bottom line is that it's going to take about six hours to get the battery fully charged to 100%. Whenever I get a new battery of any kind, whether it be a LifePo 4 or otherwise, I use this device here, this 150 watt load and battery capacity measurement tool, just to see that we're getting the advertised capacity. I configured the tester to 140 watts constant load and draining it all the way down until nothing. In fact, I didn't set any voltage limits. It was just going to drain it until the over discharge protection kicked in. I checked in at about the halfway mark, 45% ish here, and noted that it was 36 amp per hours used with a runtime of 3 hours and 20 minutes to get to that point. From here, it only took about another hour until the battery was completely and totally drained. And we came in at about four hours and 36 minutes total runtime. The capacity did come in as expected. And remember, I didn't set any limit, so the over-discharging protection kicked in and it prevented me from damaging the battery by cutting me off. There are a couple other things that we can learn from this test as well. The first is that the safety cutoff is around 12% with this 140 watt load on board. And we started with an estimate in the app of about five hours and 33 minutes remaining, but in actuality, we only ended up with four hours and 36 minutes total runtime. So the app is intended to give you a rough estimated time and is not to be taken as an exact measurement. In conclusion, I think the Rododio 50 amp per hour 12 volt battery might be a sweet deal if DC devices are your primary use case and you're looking for maximum value and capacity. For around $100 to $115 USD, you're getting 600 watt hours. The question basically comes down to what do you actually need and want? Are things like an AC inverter, USB ports, and other features actually necessary for you? My drone battery charger has a USB port included that I can plug in my controller into or wirelessly charge my phone or earbuds on top of it. And while it's not a fast charge port, it will do the job to run my laptop, which I keep with me to change settings and review footage. The tools that I bring with me to the field, like my soldering iron, are DC powered as well. And it's a little silly, I know, but if you're sitting down, it's probably the biggest FPV goggle battery pack that you can tap into ever. While they're definitely nice things to have, you don't technically need AC output or any additional features on the device itself to have a great day at the field. In short, I do think it's absolutely an alternative to consider buying a standalone battery like this versus spending more on a power bank. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, and as always, have a great day. I'm going to do some flying, and you guys take care.